Well, do you think beliefs are in themselves can become reality? I mean, so, so you've now adapted the, in this little bit of a conversation, adapted the metaphysician view of reality, which is the physics. Yes. But, you know, we humans kind of operate in the space of ideas very much so. Like we've kind of in the collective intelligence of human beings have come up with a set of ideas that persist in the minds of these many people and they become quite strong and powerful. Like in terms of like impact on our lives, they can have sometimes more impact than this table does <laughs> than the physics. Yeah, I agree. And, and in that sense, is is there some sense in which our beliefs are reality, even oh, if they're not yes, connected to absolutely. the physics? Yes, even if they're reality. not real. Yeah, even if, okay, <laughs> so yes, absolutely. So um, our beliefs are tremendously, they, uh, they create social effects, absolutely. Um, there was a belief that, I'm going to use this example. Uh oh. There was a belief back in the day, and we're talking about when I say back in the day, I'm a historian, so I'm talking about like a thousand years ago, right? That women had no souls. Okay, so look, I don't know if human beings have souls. I can tell you this though: that if human beings have souls, probably animals do too. That's my own personal belief. That's not a professor belief there. Um, but there was this belief among the Catholic. Um, magisterium, which is, is runs Europe, that women had no souls, so they had to have this big meeting about it. You know, did women have souls? But that belief had consequences for women. I mean, women were treated and yeah. have been treated as if they didn't have souls. Um, okay, so there's and the soul was really the essence of the human being. It was. It's the. It's called the animus, right? It's what is the the essence of what is is eternal. You know, women, women weren't eternal. Here's another example. Okay, this is an example from my own research. All right, so there in the Catholic tradition, there's this idea of purgatory, hell, and heaven. And these are three destinations that people can go to when they die. And if you're great, you go to heaven automatically and you're considered a saint. If you're okay, you go to purgatory, right? And you suffer for a time and then get back into heaven. Um, if you're terrible, you go to hell. Right. Okay. Yep. Well, there was a place that the Catholics determined, and this this was a belief for a long time, like a thousand years or more, um, and it was called limbo. All right. And limbo comes from the Latin limbus, and it means edge. And it was either on the edge of hell or on the edge of heaven. No one really could determine which it was. No historians are like, well, this person says it was on the edge of heaven. Well, listen. Um, this was a terrible, first of all, there is no limbo anymore. In 2007, um, Benedict, the then Pope, got rid of the idea that there was limbo. Okay, so Catholics kind of went crazy because they didn't really know, they forgot that limbo existed and they thought it was purgatory. Yeah. And they said, how could you get rid of purgatory? But actually, he just got rid of this idea of limbo. Oh, so that's a distinct thing from purgatory. It, it was. And it by was the like, way, people should know they have a book on purgatory that came before. Uh, American Cosmic. Yes, I wrote a book on purgatory. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, so limbo is a distinct thing from purgatory. Yeah. And the, the, the types of people who go to limbo happen to be virtuous pagans, okay, mm -hmm. like Socrates or somebody like that, um, and children who weren't baptized. So think of this. Think of for thou like more than a thousand years, mothers and fathers gave birth to babies who weren't baptized and couldn't be buried with their family in these burial. And you know, they then they couldn't be reunited with them in heaven. Think of the pain and suffering that that caused. And that was nothing. Yeah. Limbo's nothing. Yet the belief in it caused untold suffering. And that's just a small example. And that was as real to them. It was absolutely real. As I mean, the effects else. were real. Let's put it that way. The place itself, not real. But okay. the families themselves, do you think they really believed it? They totally much, believed it. As I've much read, as the table is real? Yes. I've read, but listen, we have trigger warnings today, right? So don't read this. It's going to make you upset, okay? Yeah. History, primary sources, <laughs> no trigger warnings, okay? Yeah. So you're going through like, you know, somebody's diary from... 1400 and you hear the suffering and pain that they went through there were times in my research where i'd have to put my primary source down you know and just basically go outside and take a walk because it was so horrific i knew it was true because they wouldn't write something you know they're not going to write in their diary something that's not true and it was horrible so yes these people went through untold suffering for nothing 
for, you know, they, because they had an erroneous belief. But they didn't know it was erroneous. So it was real to them. 